So welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 87 for 4, and today I'm joined with Silva, and today we'll be breaking down the World Cup qualifiers on match day 9 to match day 10, October edition. And there's a lot to unpack here. Some teams um, uh, overperformed, some teams underperformed, and um, I just have a lot to discuss about, man. So we're going to talk about the 10 games, guys. So shout out to Silva, man. Make sure you guys follow him on Twitter if you haven't already done so. And Silva, man, it's good to have you back, man. It's good to have you back. Yeah, what's up? It's nice to be back. Yeah. So, indeed, man. Let's start with um. Let's start with the first game we got here is Bolivia one, Colombia nil. Um, I guess I'll give quick thoughts for this game. Uh, obviously Bolivia went down a man cooler with a very bad foul during the twentieth minute, and in the first half, it, it was you could say Bolivia were pro a better team. You know, they had eleven shots, six on target. Um, and then the second half, man, Colombia really raised their game. I thought Colombia were really good in the second half. Bolivia were not good in the first half, which was surpri second half, which was surprising because this was at La Paz, and we know how much uh, La Paz is uh, dominate. But it didn't matter though the statistics because Bolivia got the goal there, Tesseris with a great goal there. And remember, guys, Colombia were unbeaten coming into this game, and they got the first loss in the qualifiers. It's a Bolivia away, and for Colombia, man, they just weren't able to find the equalizer as they won, and Bolivia defended for their lives. Uh, goalkeeper Vizcarra made a lot of saves, and that's how it finished, man. Bolivia won, Colombia nil. So, what's your thoughts on this game, man? I mean, yeah, it's never easy to go to La Paz. Doesn't matter what nation it is, everyone would struggle at La Paz because of the altitude over there. I think Colombia did their best over there. Maybe they could have had a goal there, maybe an equalizer, but Bolivia. They ended their streak, their unbeaten streak in the qualifiers. And that goal was, it was a great goal. It was like, it was like a banger. And yeah. Bolivia's keeper, he did pretty well in the game. Yeah. He's, he's got him. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, for Bolivia, as I said, man, a lot of young kids coming through. Tessera is the young kids scored the goal. And they have a new coach, Oscar Villas. And Bolivia, man, they've been in good form, man. I think they can push for a playoff position. Um, I don't think they have. I think playoffs for me is the max for them. Would you agree? For, would you agree with that? I think yeah, they should at least try to go for playoffs. It's like every home game, they have to try to get results there because like away games is pretty much opposite for Bolivia. They're not great yeah. away. Yeah. So. Bolivia, man, a very young team, and it, it'd be incredible because remember the last time Bolivia made the World Cup was a '94, and guess which nation hosted it? The United States. <laughs> and the next World Cup's gonna be hosting the United States, so maybe a fairy tale will happen. Maybe fairy tale. Twenty-two years later, uh, maybe it will happen. Um, as for Colombia, uh, I, I don't think they should be concerned. They'll, they'll obviously qualify. And I think for Colombia, as I said, it's just it's just a sad thing that their unbeaten streak came to an end here. But, you know, it is what it is. And for Colombia, as I said, man, I think they'll qualify. I think they're, 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 they're not in any danger whatsoever. Do you agree? Yeah, Colombia are fine. They've been very good. One bad game in La Paz. I'm not going to hold them hostage for that. I'm not going to hold them accountable because La Paz is never easy to go to. Yeah, yeah. For sure, man. Uh, as for this game, Ecuador, Paraguay. I mean, there's not really much to speak of here. Um, Ecuador were the better team by far. Uh, Paraguay did not create much of any chances in this game. Um, but as good as Ecuador were, and they were good, I think Ecuador were really good the first half. The second half though, was atrocious. Six shots, only one on target. And the Ecuador, man, I, I just don't understand what the, what's up with this team. They just can't create goal scoring opportunities. It's just a shame for this Ecuadorian team. And, I mean, they're good defensively. Defensively, they're fantastic. I think Hincape, Pachko, Torres is really good. Galinda as a goalkeeper is great. It's just the defense, it's just the attack is so underwhelming. I'm sorry, Enter Valencia is not reliable whatsoever. And Kendry Pius, he's a good player, but he isn't, cons you can he's too young, man. He can't, he's not going to be that explosive, you know. And Gonzalo Plata, I mean, he's a decent player, but I don't think he's that amazing. So, I mean, for Ecuador, man, are you worried for Ecuador? In the sense, with respect, with respect, Gonzalo Plata, good player, Kenry Pais, too. Yeah, I mean, but they're good yeah, players, but I don't think they're not. Valencia, 
I, I think they're very good, but Ener Valens, they need to find a striker because Ener Valens, yeah. Yeah, Ener Valens. It is, it is, it is not the great, but like you said, the defense was, um, with Pacho, with Felix Torres, and Capier, it's a pretty good defense. Those are three quality center backs. And the keeper, honestly, I think they upgraded from Dominguez. I think Galindez yeah. is much better than Dominguez was. Yeah. And I think part of why they just went in a defensive, like, they went defensive this game because it was away against Ecuador. Yeah. And Ecuador kind of do have an altitude, so part of why just played it safe. Yeah. Oh, I also forgot to mention Moises Caicedo, man. Caicedo, in my opinion, is the best Ecuadorian player on this team. He is amazing. So oh, his, yeah, Caicedo is amazing really for Ecuador. Like He's amazing, man. It's just a shame for the attack. So, I, I still feel like this Ecuador team, they need a new striker. I don't know why Valencia is still playing for them. Valencia should retire. Um, I don't know why Valencia is still playing. And for Ecuador, man, it's, they're obviously, I think they're going to qualify because of how good they are defensively. But it is going to be kind of interesting. So, so I mean, Ecuador, they should still automatically qualify, right? I would like to think so, yeah. They should but be if able to. Yeah. And for Paraguay, man, I mean, credit to Paraguay. I mean, Paraguay, with the new coach, Gustavo Alfaro, it, it, Paraguay have actually put themselves back in contention. Because before Gustavo Alfaro, I mean, Paraguay were just a complete mess. Now... They have got themselves. They picked up. They picked up, um, they picked up one win and one draw, and they picked up a draw here against Ecuador away, which is an easy place to go to, by the way. Ecuador is very good at home. Ecuador is good at home. It's a good result for Paraguay. And for Gustavo Alfaro, man, you have to give him a lot of credit for what he's done defensively with this team because this team is looking very tough to break down. And I know as a Brazilian, Silva, so, you know how that, that, you know how that game went against Paraguay. I don't want to bring you up that game, but I know, I know, how, I know how both of these games went. I got both of these teams. So, yeah, that's true. So, for, Par for Paraguay, man, do you think they put themselves right back in contention to qualify automatically for the World Cup? Uh, I mean, Paraguay do have a decent chance now, yeah. Yeah. I still I still worry about Paraguay's goal scoring. Though. I still feel like Paraguay needs more goal scores this team because, I'm sorry, Heller and Almeria is not that reliable. Um, RSA is not like good, and Enciso is a good player, but I don't think he's that amazing. Um, and you know, Sanabria, man, I don't know why he didn't play in this game, which we'll talk on later. I don't know why he didn't play at all this game because he actually was impactful. Like, well, let's talk about that when we get there. So, yeah, Paraguay, they actually have a good chance. Moving on next is we have Venezuela one, RG one. Um, RG took a lead there, Otamendi there with a the goal. Um, it, it was a good set piece from Argentina. Maybe you could say it was bad goalkeeping there from Venezuela. Bromo, maybe there with a little mistake. Otamendi capitalized upon it, and then great cross that is from so tell this one. So on. And yeah, man, I mean, it was a pretty good game. I would say I, I would say Venezuela probably the slightly better team. I thought they created more chances at the game, especially in that first half. Um, as, sorry, in the second half. Second half, I thought they were really good. Argentina were not great in the second half, but Argentina defensively are so good. I mean, really is a good goalkeeper. Obviously, he's deputizing for the um, suspended Emmy Martinez due to his gestures he made in the last game. And yeah, for Argentina, man, I think what this shows is that while they may not be good amazing attacking-wise, they're going to be tough to beat. They're going to be tough to beat, and Argentina's defense is still generally solid, would you say? And for Venezuela, man, uh, they miss a lot of chances, man. And it kind of worries me for Venezuela because they haven't won a game, man, since October, I believe, which is kind of worrying. Um, and I really hope Venezuela can qualify automatically for the World Cup because this, they're the only team that's never, they're the only team that's been qualified for the World Cup. And for Venezuela, man, it's, it's a bit of a, I mean, it's a good result. Obviously, they should be happy, but I feel like they could have maybe got a win here potentially, you know, especially how good they were in the second half. So what do you think about this game, Silva? I think, yeah, Venezuela were the better team in this game. I wasn't really impressed by Argentina, considering, you know, uh, we know how good Argentina can be, but this game, they weren't as great as we expected them. The pitch was bad. Like, I can oh, agree yeah, with that, but it was bad for both teams. So, yeah. 
I think Venezuela, they played well. They could have snatched the win, but Cerulli, yeah, he played well for Argentina. He's a good backup for Divo Martinez. Yeah. And Soteldo played well. Got the assist to Rondon. And I think overall it's a fair result. Yeah. So, I mean, for... And also, I forgot to mention that this is Messi's first game back for Argentina after the Copa America final. So, I forgot to mention that. So, yeah. For Venezuela, man, I mean, do you think they could still qualify? Or are you kind of getting worried for Venezuela? Because I'm starting to get a little worried. Mm, yeah, a little bit worried for them. They have to start get, racking up results. Yeah. And I think the next game they have in November is against Brazil, which is going to be tough at, at home, you know. And um, and then they got to play, like, um, what's it called, Chile away. And I know how Chile are terrible, which we'll get into a bit later. Chile are so difficult to beat at their ground. So, for Venezuela, man, they, they're going to have to get those wins, man. They're going to have to get those wins because, I mean, it's all good and all getting draws, but draws only give you one point. They need those three points. If RG, obviously, they'll qualify. I mean, it's not even question. It's not even questionable at the moment. If RG, man, I just think it was maybe the bad pitch was maybe a factor of why they weren't so good. But at the same time, though, it was for Venezuela as well. So, you know, but but as I said earlier, though, RG is the type of team that they can just get results, even when they're not at their best. That's just the type of team they are. So, they have that character in them. So, credit to um, RG for holding on for a point. Um, and for Venezuela, man, just a, it feels like a maybe. A, is this a missed opportunity? Would you say, or it, it's it's fine? I mean, it's good that they drew against um, Argentina, but they could have won the game, and they do need some wins because, like yeah. you said, they haven't won a game since October. Yeah, actually, I want to just look at the fixtures real quickly. Let me just look at the fixtures. I got Brazil at home, Chile away. Then Ecuador away, then Peru away, then Bolivia at home. I'll get that, uh, the, and then uh, RG, Uruguay and Argentina away. So this will be tough. And then they got to play uh, Colombia at home. So yeah, I mean some tough games upcoming, man. But I think I think maybe the Peru game, and uh, I think the Peru Bolivia game, they they have to win those two games, especially those two games. Mm-hmm. And they maybe need to get a result against Chile. So yeah, uh, see, see you later. All right, the final game we got here, actually the penultimate game we got here, it is, um, of course, Chile 1, uh, Brazil 2, man. I, actually, I'll, le- I'll let you lead this one since you're Brazilian, man. So how, how, how does this win feel, man? You must, you, must feel, uh, you must feel relieved. Yeah, yeah, the first opening minutes, first two minutes, uh, the defense, for some reason, fell asleep. It was a great cross. I forgot by who it was. I uh, gotta check sure. that for me. It was oh, by, yeah, 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 the right back for Chile. It was a good cross. So much space that Amner gave, who has yeah, he got his debut against Chile, and it was poor defending. It was like poor marking by Danilo for Eduardo Vargas, and it was a. Open header. Ederson also could have done better there. Could have died for that ball. Could have probably saved it. But I'm putting the blame on Danilo because he didn't know how to mark Edu Vargas. Yeah. But after that, Chile, they, they were really sitting back. That's like the typical South American game move. Like once they score against those big nations, you know, they will sit back and pray to hold on. Yeah. So obviously Brazil were like trying a lot. I don't think first half Brazil weren't as good, especially in midfield. But like at towards the end it got kind of better. Savinho, good Savinho, dribble. Man. It was a great dribble by him. Good cross and Igor Jesus on his debut scoring his first goal for Silasso. And massive goal. Yeah, it was a really massive goal. It was a nice header. And then the second half, we made some subs. Like Paqueta and Andre came off for Gerson and um, uh, Bruno Guimaraes. Yeah. yeah. And Luis Enrique came on la- later on. And those three pretty much changed the game for us because I think we had more control. We played better and... 
uh, Luis Enrique, of course. He was the one who got the winner. It was a great dribble. Good good shot at the edge of the box last minute. It was a great finish. And yeah, wasn't a convincing win, but a win is a win. I don't care. Yeah, you were desperate. You need this win. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say, like, the best players here, it was um, Gabriel Megalayas. Um, Salvini was good. Uh, Igor Jesus got the goal. Gerson was good off the bench. Bruno G did decent. And of course, Luis Enrique, uh, the game winner from him. So, so basically, the and I'll also the say, oh, sorry. yeah, basically, both both saved the Silas so that day. <laughs> yes, that, that's true. So yeah, uh, and also Abner, I'll say, even though he got afforded that much space for the cross after that, I think he did fine for Silas. So even though I don't rate Abner that highly. I think he did fine in the Chile game. But both the Fogo players, they were the ones who saved the the day for Silesão. And what I've noticed is that the players from the Brasileiro, they give more for the national team than the players who play in Europe. I'm not saying all of them in Europe are bad, but like the players you'd expect to perform don't perform for the national team. So Yeah. And so, let me yeah. just say this right now. International international football shows me who the real ballers are. For me, it's I find when you ball for your national team, I find it more impressive than for your club team. I find it more impressive. Because international I mean, don't look, play weak. Oh, sorry. Yeah, with the with the national team, if you're performing for them and show that you have the mentality and you have the real passion for your nation like that's where i respect you like yeah, yeah, sure you can obviously club performances are nice but if you can do that for the national team that's where i respect you yeah like for me like um uh, for example uh, going earlier james rodriguez he's an amazing player for colombia do i really care about his club form that much not really to be honest with you i mean look because if you're a colombian if you're a Colombian, you would love Hamas. Who cares what he does at Rio or Sao Paulo or yeah. Olympiacos, whatever? It's the the yeah. national team he always turns up. Yeah. So there's a certain expectation. I think the Brazil League, Brazil players really balled out today, like the Brazilian League players. And maybe um, this is something for Brazil to consider. Maybe go. It's maybe you should go all Brazil. Maybe it should be mostly Brazil League based players. You know, and Botafogo is like the best team in Brazil right now. So. If you're going to call your your domestic players, you got to call them the best of the best, you know? I mean, look, I'm not saying call up the national team, the entire Brasileiro, because obviously that will also be a disaster. But, yeah, like, it should, should include some more of them, especially when some of the European players aren't performing as expected. Like I'd say the European players, Gabriel, he's doing very good now for Silla, so, yeah. so yeah, I'd keep good. him. But like players like Rodrigo and Vinicius, even Hafinha yeah. recently, is a bit like 50-50. Vinicius, I think this guy, with what he's doing at Real Madrid, is like unacceptable for what he's doing at Celso. Like we expect much more from Vinicius because of what he's doing at Real Madrid. He's literally about yeah. to win the Ballon d'Or, but he doesn't show those performances at Celso. It's the same with Rodrigo. Rodrigo's a bit 50-50 as well. Like, they are not yeah. consistent for the national team, especially Vinicius, because he has, like, five goals in, like, 30-plus matches for us. Yeah, that's really poor. Um, I guess we could quickly talk about Chile real quick. Um, Chile, man, I mean, they, they pretty much sat back. They were trying to defend the 1-0 lead. They were trying to do what Paraguay did, but the difference between Chile and Paraguay is that Paraguay actually have a way better defense than Chile. Paraguay can actually man more players. And it can actually still have attacking output. Chile just is this team just there. There's this team is just beyond finished. They're washed. I'm sorry. This team has no athleticism. There's no grit in this team. There's no dynamism in this team. The players are simply mediocre. And you can blame Greco all you want. And yes, Greco probably does need to take blame. But I think the players are just simply mediocre. I like I, I Greco just can't do much with mediocre players. You know. So. Yeah, 
And I think, too, there's a lot of issues beyond just the players. I think the Football Association, the Federation, the President. I mean, there's a lot of issues. Um, in fact, there was actually a video, there was actually a video out. Um, you guys should watch the downfall of Chile national team. Down, great video I saw from a um, uh, great video I saw. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to see it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So Silva, Matt, what is there to say about Chile? You have any quick thoughts to say about Chile before we move on? I mean, Chile, their golden generation ended a long yeah. time ago. I think 2022 World Cup qualifiers. That was like the last time you can go with that gimmick with like Vidal, Alexis, and all those. But now it's a whole new generation, and it's simple to say: these guys are not it. <laughs> these new generation for Chile, it's not really that great. Yeah, and for Chile, man, as I said, man, this is is quite sad to see the bottom of the condable table. This is a new low. I don't think I've ever seen Chile down this bad in their life, in my life at least. So, it's a new low for Chile. Um, moving on to the next game we got here. It is Peru won Uruguay nil. So, shout out to Peru, man. They finally get a win. You know, this was the last team to not win a game, and they finally got a win here, man. And I got to say, man, it was a good win. Great goal there from Araujo, the center back. And I don't know what Rochette was doing there. Terrible goalkeeping there. And for Uruguay, as I said, and for, well, actually, let's talk about Peru first. Let's give them the positive. Let, let's be positive here. See, the thing is, like, I still think Peru is washed. I still think they're finished. But at least they're showing, they're at least showing some character. and They're showing some fighting spirit. Unlike Chile. Chile didn't show any fighting spirit. Chile showed nothing. Like, there's a difference between Peru and Chile is that they're both really bad. But at least Peru is showing more grit and showing more character, showing more fight. They're, they're willing to die for the batch. Whereas Chile, I don't see that at all. That being said, though, I still don't think Peru's going to do it. I still think this win doesn't really change much of anything. I mean, it's a good win um, and anything, but I still think they're I still think they're finished. I still don't think they're going to qualify for the World Cup. And I just think that's, for me, as good as the Peru win was, it was more of how bad Uruguay was. Uruguay was been so bad. You know, Uruguay haven't scored a goal in the last three games. That's crazy. Four games if you include the Copa America. Actually, five games, actually, if I, if those two. Because remember, the quarterfinals and the semifinals didn't score in either of those games. And the last two games, they didn't score. In this game, they didn't score either. So, like, it's just been terrible for Uruguay. Bielsa, man, there's a lot of rumors that he might get sacked. He's losing the dress room. Suarez called him out, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's up with Uruguay, man. Because the thing is, Uruguay shouldn't be... They're, they're, they should be winning this game with all due respect. And for Uruguay, as I said, man, I mean, it's just shambles to see. Because this team looks talented, man. I mean, you have Valverde. You have Nunes, you have Derek Scott, uh, you have Guate, Rochette. And Guate playing at center back was also very strange. Why was Guate playing at center back? I mean, it was just very weird. So, what's your thoughts on this game, Silva? I mean, I don't think you're the white play that's great in this game. Like, like you said, Bielsa's job is in danger, I think, because of what happened in the dressing room. I don't know what happened specifically, but... There is clear that there is problem because Suarez called him out on it during like yeah yeah that's right. what he what happened at Copa America, like he was yeah, he's like a legend. That, yeah, and that's Suarez. That's like a huge idol for the national team. Like of course he also retired. Player, recently. He retired last month too. Yeah, he also retired like recently for the national team, and obviously these players are going to look up to him. They'd rather listen to him than to Bielsa, who's not even from their country, and I think the. The set, the I think the point that Suarez is trying to make was like that Bielsa treated them like, like robots, you know, like he only cared about the footballing side and not the personal aspects. Which you know, you're not gonna get the respect from the coach if you, you he, if you you don't care for them. So I think it's been like this for Bielsa for a while. I think. Um, he's always been like a football guy, good tactician, but like man management, I don't think it's it. Like in the showing in the na national team right now, even yeah. even Fede Valverde, the I think he is the captain right now for Uruguay. Yeah, he is captain. And he even said that he agrees with Suarez because Suarez is the biggest, one of the biggest idols for the Uruguay national team. So I think. Bielsa, he's under a hot, he's in a hot seat right now, because 
Uh, now he just lost to Peru, who Peru didn't even win that game in a while. Yeah. But I have to give credit to Peru. I don't think they were bad. But that goal they scored, Rochette, I don't know what he was doing. Like, it was straight at him, and, like, he hit it to the post and it went in. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, do you agree with me, though, that Peru is still finished and that you don't think they're going to qualify? Yeah, 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 of course. Chile and Peru, their national teams, their golden generation is done. After yeah, yeah. the qualifiers in 2022, after that, is is done. Yeah, and as for Uruguay, obviously they're going to qualify. I mean, them and Brazil as well are going to qualify. But it's just been worrying of how underwhelming Uruguay has been because a lot of people hype them up before the Copa America. A lot of people saying, oh, this team could maybe win the Copa America. Maybe they're the second best team. And we all saw what Uruguay did in the Copa America. They were very disappointing. And now the qualifiers, they haven't been good. Like, honestly, after they beat Brazil and Argentina, they haven't been the same since, to be honest with you. Do you agree with that? Yep. I 100% agree. So, for so Bielsa... We'll have, see, we'll have to see if Bielsa lasts till the World Cup. Which, for me, he probably could. Probably could not. Because, like, maybe they'll sack him because the players are getting tired of him. But at the same time, it's like, I don't think they can get anyone better than him. Yeah, exactly, man. And when you lose the dressing room, it's very hard to get it back. It's very hard yeah. to get it back. So I think, I think, like, if he loses, like, he's facing Brazil next month at Brazil. I think if they lose that game, pressure is really going to rise up. Yeah, pressure is going to rise up. And I believe uh, we'll get we'll get on to match day ten, man. But uh, I believe they're the only yeah yeah they're the only team that didn't score in this uh, the, the the only team in the South American that didn't score. Which is actually yeah, they, they did not do well in this break. Yeah. All right, let's move to match day ten. Um, well, let's talk about this. So Colombia versus Chile. I mean, what is there to say? I'll just be very very brief here. Obviously, Colombia absolutely decimated Chile. It wasn't even a contest, and Chile were just awful. The passes they were making from the like it was some of the goals, some of the defending here I saw was terrible defending the Kusevic, the the center back was terrible. I think the one of the midfields made a mistake and Colombia just ran right. I mean, James Rodriguez was cooking. Luis Diaz scored, Sanchez scored a header there, and Sinister man came off the bench and Juan scored. I mean, Colombia just destroyed Chile and Chile just looked absolutely sh- garbage, really really bad. So, yeah, I mean, is there really anything to add? I mean, yeah, Chile's generation, like we said minutes ago, it's over for them. It's done. And Colombia, once again, proving why they're the second best South American nation. They've been unreal, Colombia. Even though they lost to Bolivia, they bounced back immediately against Chile. And James Rodriguez, what a player he is. What he is doing right now, I think he can go to the World Cup. I think he's eyeing the World Cup right now. I think he has yes. one more in him because, like, he missed out on twenty twenty two, and I believe he missed a penalty in one of the last few games, which kind of costed it then. So yeah, and he was injured in twenty eighteen too, right? He was there in twenty eighteen, but he was injured against England. Yeah, so. So Maybe now he's, like, he's eyeing he, he's eyeing the 2026 World Cup. He really wants that good World Cup because like 2014 yeah. was where many Colombians you know, idolized him. Like that's when he became a huge idol for Colombia, and now he wants to end it off with how he started. Yeah, and that's Lorenzo. You have to give him a lot of credit for what he's done with this Colombia team to rejuvenate them from from after being the slumps and not scoring in like World Cup qualifying games to missing out the World Cup. And so, like, and now he's got this team to a Copa America final. You could probably say the second best team in South America. I mean, it's a amazing. It's, it's, it's you know. insane how fast Colombia like like bounced back because like 2022 qualifiers. We all know how bad Colombia were. Like, we didn't even think they was gonna be good again because like yeah. they didn't even qualify to the World Cup. And it was like, besides Luis Diaz, who is there? But now it's like they have a really good team. Yeah, and Dora, man, I mean, this guy's talented. I don't know. I, like I, I said earlier, guys, a few weeks ago, is he the best? He's the best super sub right now in the world, by far. He's the best super sub. I don't know anyone else that's scoring the many goals coming off the bench at a consistent rate. And it makes me wonder, how is he not a starter if you're scoring so many goals at this rate? I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. But yeah, I mean, um, maybe he should be a starter. 
given how good he's been. Because I think he's better than Cordoba, in my opinion. I mean, and, yeah, for, for, for Aston Villa, they have Oli Watkins there, but like for Colombia, yeah. he's, he's much better than Cordoba. I don't know yeah. why Duran doesn't start. Yeah. But yeah, and as for Chile, man, just beyond finished, and uh, there's no hope for them to qualify. If they, they're they they're not qualifying for the World Cup. I mean, they're not even getting the playoffs, in my opinion. I think it's over for them. So, yeah. Uh, next time we got here, it is Paraguay 2, Venezuela 1. Paraguay, man. I got to give it up to the men. They showed character in this game. And, you know, when they went 1 0 down, see, the old Paraguay team would have just given up and say, oh, 1 0 down, it's over. We, you know, or maybe just, I, I don't think the old Paraguay team, like the, the one we saw before the Copa America, they wouldn't have come back from this. And Amarbu with a great goal there, a great pass there from Sotelda. And CISO missed the penalty, man. It was a bad penalty miss there. Uh, but in the second half, man, right into the Gustavo Gomez, making the halftime change, bringing Senebrio on. Senebrio scored the goal there. Great cross out from Junior Alonso. And then the second goal, kind of bad defending there from Venezuela. I mean, uh, I don't know what um, the Venezuela defense was doing. I don't know what Romo was doing there in particular. Easy header, 2-1. And yeah, I mean, I think for Venezuela, man, they... I think the problem with this team is that they're just they're not consistent enough for 90 minutes. I feel like this team just has some good patches here or there, but they're not really consistent throughout the game. And as for Paraguay, I think it's a massive win for them. Huge win for them. And I think it's put them right back in contention. You have to give credit to what Gustavo Gomez has done in, in his short term. It's been four games, and he hasn't lost a game since the Copa America. And maybe that Copa America humiliation was great for them because now they got a new coach, Gustavo Gomez. And now you see how this Paraguay team could cook. So, what do you have to say about this game, Matt? I mean, yeah, Venezuela, they bottled it. They could have had a win in this game as well, like against Argentina. But this was a game they could have won as well. But second yeah. half, Paraguay changed their game up. And it was Sanabria who, I don't know, like you said, I don't know why he didn't play in the first game. But um, in this one, he came. He came and played. Scored twice. He was a, like an instant. He was like an impact of the super sub impact of the bench. And Gustavo Gomez coming back really helped Paraguay's defense. And by the oh, way, sorry, I meant Gustavo Alfaro as a coach. Gustavo huh? Alfaro, not Gustavo. Sorry, I was talking about Gustavo Gomez the coach, but I meant the player. No, sorry, I mean the coach. The coach is Gustavo Alfaro, not the player. Sorry, I'll let you finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfaro, good coach. Like he changed them up. But you can also say Gustavo Gomez, the defender, he also yes. he yeah, is yeah, very he's very good too. And yeah. you'll never guess where he plays as well. So, <laughs> so yeah. Tom Harris. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. he also changed the Paraguay's defense. But Alfaro, he came in. He was the coach for Costa Rica in the Copa America. Yeah, yes. Yes. So, yeah. And it's funny because they... I think they took points off Paraguay in the Copa America. Yeah. So now he went to them and now he's helping them. He harmed them in the past, but now he's helping them. Yeah, now, now it's forgiven. So, <laughs> yeah. And I think for Paraguay, because the, the thing with Paraguay, what they've always been known for is that defensively they were always tough to break down. It's just the goal scoring was really bad. But I think now with Santa Bria coming off the bench, I think maybe Paraguay have now found the striker. Found their weapon up top, their attacker. Yeah. So, and as for Venezuela, man, it's a it's such a missed opportunity. Like I feel like this game was a game where even if they couldn't win, a draw would have been huge. Away to Paraguay, but they couldn't even get a draw. So it's really tough for them. And for Venezuela, man, I'm getting really worried, man. I really hope they can make it. I want them to complete Copa America. I want them to complete Condable, man. I have all the countries qualify. But maybe they'll have to do the hard way. Maybe they'll have to do the, 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 do the playoffs. Maybe that's the best way for them. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. And shout out to Roma for making that penalty save on his So Massive save there. Um, then we have Uruguay nil, Ecuador nil. Uh, I mean, this was a stinger of a game. What is there to say about this game? Nothing. Boring game. Very, very bad. And this is another game where Bielsa is under pressure. Didn't win these two games. Yeah. And we were just talking about earlier, Uruguay's the only team of the 10 teams that didn't even score a goal. Even Chile and Peru scored a goal. Not even yeah. Uruguay. Yeah, wow. Peru scored against Uruguay, so that's saying something. 
Yeah, so for Uruguay, as I said, man, I, I, this team, man, Nunes, man. Like I said, with Nunes, he's a hot and cold player. He's not a consistent player. He's not an ama- He's not going to be on the caliber of Suarez. Anyone that believes that, you're just dumb. I'm sorry. He's not the level of Suarez or I, mean, I can't blame Nunes when he's not getting any support and any service. Like, good or white, they struggle to even build from the back. So, like, they, they yeah, I mean, that's just... String passes. Yeah. So that's true, man. And for Uruguay, man, do you think do you think that what do you think is wrong with this Uruguay team? Is it really all on Bielsa or the players? Nah, nah, nah. I think it's everything. It's just a whole mess. Yeah, it's really a mess over there. Yeah, and for Ecuador, as I said, man, we were just talking about earlier. Defensively, they're great, but my goodness, I mean, that sack is so mid. That sack is so mediocre. And our Valencia just is just I don't know why he's still playing. I uh, know. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame. For this one, so I still expect both these teams to automatically qualify, but it won't be convincing matters. It'll probably be unconvincing. And, Uruguay um, will qualify, but Ecuador, oh, yeah, you. Ecuador, I think also will. Yeah, yeah, they they both they they both probably will, but yeah, not really much to speak about this game and Valverde, man. I mean, in my opinion, he's probably been one of the best players in the world this season so far. He's been doing a Real Madrid, but at Uruguay, just hasn't really been great. But you know. It is. He's a midfielder today. It's, it's like you know you can't really criticize him that much. You know he's doing everything he can. But yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on, we have RGS six, Bolivia nil. I mean, as a Brazilian, this <laughs> it's probably painful to watch. But um, RG just cruise control this game against Bolivia, and I and it, I think that just shows that Bolivia is really just home merchants today. They're they're not they're they're not away merchants. They're just home merchants. And shout out to Messi, he scored a hat trick. Um, you know, his tenth hat trick, I believe I heard, if I'm mistaken. And I think this was his first hat trick since I believe you know, guess which team was the last team he scored a hat trick against in a competitive game. So not friendly? Yeah, a competitive game. Probably Bolivia. <laughs> That's yeah, so it was Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bolivia. <laughs> I mean he scored a hat trick against was now. Gonna say- yeah, I was going to say Curaçao and Estonia. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, he scored a competitive hat trick yeah, against um, I, Bolivia. I remember the Bolivia hat trick after he won Copa America. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it was it, it, it was cruise control. Lotar looked good. Alvarez looked good. Molina looked good. Uh, Palacios, Almeida, Nico Paz. Nico Paz looked good as well. You know, young kid coming through. Plays like Como now. Uh, Real Madrid product, I believe. If not mistaken, and yeah, for uh, RGM man, it was just cruise control. Bolivia were just shambles defensively. I believe their center back and I think the right back made mistakes with the goals. And Vizcarra could have done better for some of the goals. I think the second goal for Messi could have done better for. But yeah, Bolivia, as I said, man, they were just awful. There's not really much to speak of here. And for RGM man, cruise control. And yeah, man, it just shows that Argentina man um, got the win. Messi three goals and two assists. I mean, I don't know how he didn't get a ten rating. I mean, he <laughs> he basically did everything. But um, he didn't get a 10 rating. So, like, I guess that's kind of harsh. But, you know, it is what it is. And for our, So, what is there to say about this game? you have any quick thoughts on this game? No, not really. It's your typical game against Bolivia. At home, this is like anyone can do it. Besides Chile, of course. I don't know <laughs> why they didn't win against Bolivia. But, like, Bolivia way is not... That's, like, the easiest game you can have in the qualifiers, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, if you're at yeah. home facing against Bolivia, that's the easiest game you can get. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. All right, then the final game we got here, it is Brazil 4, Peru nil. Brazil, man, it finally a big win. Well, I don't remember the last time Brazil had a huge win. It's been some time, and I'm, I'm sure you must be so happy with this win. We had a big win in Paraguay, though. Oh, yeah. In Copa America. Wait. Well, uh, technically, that was uh, that was a neutral ground, but I see what you mean. But I mean, like in the World Cup qualifiers. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably the last one was against Bolivia last year. Yeah. So, yeah, Peru. They came in. They they wanted to defend at the entire game from the start. I knew this is. I thought that we was gonna win like one nil or two nil because it, Peru were like defending a lot, but. 
was surprised to see that we scored like four goals against them. So like the first the first goal was a penalty. It was a nice pass by Gerson to Igor Jesus. And um he tried to like control the ball, hit the hand of Zambrano, easy penalty and Rafinha was a good penalty by him, and then another penalty Rafinha got. It was a foul on Savinho in the box, and another clear penalty. And it was another good pen penalty by Rafinha. And then the super sub, Luis Enrique again. He's doing another great game by him. Immediately comes on and makes an assist for, for Andreas Pejera, another sub. And that was a really good goal by Andreas. It was like a good scissor kick. And then, like, moments after that, Luis Enrique decides to shoot outside the box and score a goal for absolutely no reason. And, yeah, I think it was a great game by uh, Brazil overall. I think Vanderson starting over Danilo, that was a good move by Dorival because Danilo is aging and... Uh, we saw what he was, how he played against Chile. It wasn't that great, so Vanderson had to start, had to get a chance, and he did well. He did well for his first start. Uh, Gabriel once again had a great game. Uh, Hafinha, <laughs> two good penalties by him. I wouldn't Rafinha. say that, I wouldn't say it was a masterclass by Hafinha, but it was okay game. And Igor Jesus also had a decent game. Gerson played very well. And Amner also did decent. And off the bench, obviously. Luis Henrique and Andreas, they played very well. And I'll also say, uh, Mateus Pereira also came off. The Cruzeiro player, he had a decent cameo. So, yeah, once again, Brasileiro players cooking for Silaso. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. So, I mean, it was a great, it was a huge win, man. Massive win. And I think it gives you a confidence boost. And I know it's against Peru, and I know people, Peru has been terrible, but still, like, it's a huge win. And Brazil haven't had a huge win in a long time. So, I think you should feel very happy with the win. Rafinha balled out. Gerson looked good. Guemaras looked good. And yeah, Dorival, man, he's off the hot seat for now. <laughs> for now. You know, yeah, uh, next, Brazil games next, are in November. Next break is against Uruguay. And Venezuela. And Venezuela. So that's like huge test for Dorival. And I think he might be saved because a certain someone is coming back from injury. From his ACL. Yes. Yes. Yes, man. Yeah. Yes, man. Man, I'm yeah. going to watch this. Neymar. Is very, very cool as well. Neymar, man. Yeah, Neymar is back. And it's pretty crazy because the game where he got that ACL, he's going to play against that same team. Next month, wow! <laughs> so yeah. maybe he could get revenge on Uruguay. Yeah, maybe he can get revenge. Anyways, man, I hope you guys did enjoy this review. It was around forty-three minutes. Jeez, it was a long review. So um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. Also follow Silva on Twitter. I'll leave a link in the description below. And remember, guys, like and subscribe, and peace out.